Derek Dean reflects on his use of the masquerade ability to alter his appearance, acknowledging it as a deceptive move on his part. Meanwhile, Guido readies his bow, displaying signs of frustration. Frank apologizes to Derek for the behavior of another individual and asks him to disregard it. Derek contemplates his surroundings, noting that he believes himself to be in the middle layers of the cave. He questions the other person's preparedness, remarking on their lack of a weapon, which he sees as a test of their skills. Observing the dirtiness of his clothes, it appears he has been underground for at least a day. Questions arise, is he alone? Where is his weapon? What level is he? While they may be assessing him covertly, his suspicions are glaringly evident. Although a certain level of distrust is expected in adventurers, Guido's demeanor exhibits it excessively. The situation is precarious, if they delve too deeply, a misstep on his part could lead to an attack at any moment. In the worst-case scenario, preemptive action to intimidate them and make a swift escape may be necessary, instilling fear within the entire group. Derek and Frank exchanged a tense glance, with Frank pondering his options. Meanwhile, Shelley turned to Derek urgently, expressing concern about a dungeon disaster unfolding. Derek responded nervously, wondering if she had no suspicions about him whatsoever. Guido intervened, cautioning Shelley against being so reckless, suggesting that the man could potentially be a bandit. However, Shelley simply smiled and reassured them, stating that he wasn't a bad person and that she could tell just by looking at him. Guido chuckled wryly, referring to him as a damn happy-go-lucky idiot. Shelley turned to Derek, inquiring if he had ventured into the area alone or if he had companions with him. Derek's expression soured at Guido's response, prompting him to turn and look at him. Meanwhile, Shelley maintained a friendly demeanor, offering Derek assistance in getting out if he was in trouble. However, Derek swiftly retreated, insisting that he was fine. Guido prepared to take action, but Frank intervened, advising against shooting. Shelley expressed concern for Derek's well-being, expressing hope that he was safe. Guido dismissed her comment with frustration, suggesting that they wouldn't assist a suspicious individual in leaving the area. Shelley, feeling a bit upset, spoke up, expressing her disagreement. You don't have to be so mean, he might have seemed a bit strange, but there's no way he was a bad person. And if we leave him alone, he might die in the disaster. Frank interjected, asserting his opinion. He was very suspicious. I think he's most likely an exiled criminal, and even if he doesn't attack us, being wary of him will just end in us fighting. Shelley clenched her fist, reiterating her belief. Derek doesn't seem like a bad person. Frank contemplated to himself that engaging in fights with other individuals within the dungeon posed a significant risk to everyone involved. While Derek may indeed be a criminal, there was no necessity to pursue him if he chose to flee independently. Guido's demeanor likely heightened Derek's fear of them unnecessarily. Frank glanced over at Shelley, reflecting on the perilous circumstances they had faced. Neither of them could take decisive action in that moment. However, Shelley's kindness and compassion towards Derek allowed him to escape. It was her ability to diffuse the tension that enabled them to part ways without any further conflict. With a smile and his finger under his chin, Frank acknowledged that being suspicious and maintaining a level head were valuable traits for an adventurer. However, he recognized Shelley's trust in people as a virtue. He suggested to the group to forget about Derek for now and asked Guido for his decision on their next move. Guido contemplated the situation and agreed that dealing with the issue immediately might be the best course of action. He reasoned that as the rear guard, he could always retreat if necessary. Shelley smiled and called out Guido's name in agreement. Frank playfully hugged Guido from behind, eliciting a scowl from him. With a laugh, Frank teased Guido about his serious demeanor. Guido responded in kind, exchanging banter with Frank. Shelley smiled at the exchange and reassured them both that everything would be fine, emphasizing their status as one of the top parties in the guild. She clenched her fist with determination and suggested they proceed as usual, working together to swiftly defeat their adversaries. 
In her thoughts, Shelley reflected on the dungeon disaster, vowing to prevent such tragedies from occurring again as long as she had the ability to do so. After some time passes, Derek finds himself exhausted, clutching his knees and taking deep breaths. Reflecting on his recent actions, he acknowledges that he ended up fleeing from the situation, feeling as though he came across as suspicious. He wonders if anyone is chasing after him and adjusts the mask hanging on the right side of his face. Derek's thoughts drift to a past encounter with Shelley, where she expressed concern for his well-being and offered assistance. He muses to himself about the rarity of such kindness, particularly since becoming undead about a week ago. Recalling his party members' chilly attitudes towards him, he questions whether they are truly prepared to face the dungeon boss. They did appear to be a formidable party, but Derek finds himself disinterested in their dungeon run. Holding his head in his hands, he considers it futile to worry about them and reflects on his recent encounter with them. Seating himself on the ground and covering his face with his hand, he contemplates their confidence and how they may view him. Examining his hand, he notes his human form and acknowledges his inability to reveal his true nature, which leaves him feeling powerless. Derek ponders Frank's words about adventurers rising to defend the people in the city, contemplating the significance of their roles. Meanwhile, the trio group, including Guido charging his bow, prepares for a formidable challenge ahead. Guido, sensing the intensity of the situation, surmises that the individual they're facing is the dungeon boss. Frank cautions the group not to lower their guard, as they are likely to encounter a monster stronger than any they've faced before. As the trio faces the monstrous dungeon boss, they observe its formidable appearance, a creature resembling a Godzilla with two wings, glowing red eyes, and razor-sharp teeth. Identified as the Gargoyle King, its level is a daunting 30, boasting 152 hit points and a magical power of 56. Classified as a rank C monster, the Gargoyle King emits a menacing growl, signaling its readiness to unleash its formidable might upon the trio. The trio readies themselves for the impending battle, stealing their resolve to confront this powerful adversary. Shelley's shock at the monster's level being higher than anticipated is evident as she realizes it's too late to retreat. Frank takes charge, assigning roles for the impending battle. He positions himself at the front to confront the monster head-on while directing Shelley to flank from the side. Understanding the importance of avoiding a prolonged fight with such a formidable opponent, Frank emphasizes the need to give it their all from the start. With determination, Frank readies his sword, the blue energy crackling around it as he unleashes a sword wave towards the monster. However, to his astonishment, the monster effortlessly blocks the attack, showcasing its incredible strength. Undeterred, Frank presses on, lunging towards the monster with the intent to strike. Yet, despite his best efforts, the monster's tough skin proves impenetrable, leaving Frank stunned by the lack of effect his strike had. As the monster attempts to launch an attack at Shelley, she swiftly dodges it with ease. Despite being taken aback by the monster's level, she remains undaunted, confident in her own abilities. Determined not to be outmatched in combat, Shelley reaffirms her resolve. Suddenly, a message appears on her screen, indicating the activation of a skill called Sword Princess, awakening her latent talent for swordsmanship. Shelley, determined to make an impact, swings her sword at the monster, only to find that her attack seems ineffective against its tough hide. Even Guido's arrow, aimed with precision, fails to penetrate the monster's defenses, leaving him frustrated at their inability to inflict damage. Observing the towering monster before him, Frank ponders its characteristics. Despite its formidable defense, he realizes that the eyes might be a vulnerable spot. However, the monster's two swords pose a significant obstacle, making it difficult to execute such a plan. As the monster strikes at Frank with its sword, he defends against the attack with his own weapon. Amidst the clash, Frank's mind races, searching for a strategy to overcome the formidable foe. Suddenly, a red aura emerges from the ground, catching him off guard as he realizes that the monster possesses magic abilities as well. 
as the monster activates its skill, enveloping the arena in a swirling vortex of red smoke, Frank finds himself struggling with injuries to both of his hands. Despite the pain and the dire situation, he casts a quick glance at Shelley, reassured that she appears to be safe. However, he senses her loss of hope, adding to the weight of the situation. Determined to maintain leadership and rally his team, Frank grips his sword tightly, resolving to press on despite the seemingly insurmountable odds. He knows that giving up now could spell disaster for them all, so he urges himself and his companions to keep attacking, no matter how futile it may seem. As Frank unleashes a powerful sword beam towards the monster, Shelley watches in awe at his impressive skills. The monster, caught off guard by the sudden onslaught, is visibly shocked. Seizing the opportunity, Frank follows up with a swift cross slash, aiming to exploit any weakness in the monster's defenses. Urging Guido into action, Frank calls for an arrow strike, directing Guido to target the monster's eye. With precision, Guido's arrow finds its mark, piercing the vulnerable spot in the monster's stomach. As Frank finds himself knocked back by the retaliatory strike from the monster, Guido urgently warns Shelley of the danger. With Frank incapacitated and the monster poised to deliver a finishing blow, Shelley shouts Frank's name in a desperate attempt to divert the monster's attention. Despite Shelley's cries, Frank remains grounded, vulnerable to the impending attack. Guido's frustration boils over as he berates Shelley, calling her a fucking idiot for their predicament. Shelley, kneeling beside Frank, desperately considers her options, realizing the impossibility of carrying Frank while engaging in combat. With gritted teeth, she expresses remorse to Guido, acknowledging that their choices have cornered him as well. Despite her anger and regret, she still hopes for a way out, even if it means Guido can escape. Exhausted and defiant, Guido responds to Shelley's remorse by asserting his autonomy insisting that he made the decision to stay and fight independently. As he loses consciousness, Shelley calls out to him, but receives no response. The monster's roar fills the air, accompanied by a surge of red energy, prompting Shelley to close her eyes, bracing for what she believes is her inevitable demise. However, to her astonishment, she remains alive, spared from the monster's attack. In a dramatic turn of events, Derek emerges, wielding the monster's sword, no longer willing to cower in fear. With determination in his eyes, he curses the monster, proclaiming his intent to confront it directly. With a defiant shout, he challenges the monster, declaring his readiness to face it head-on. As Derek stands there, gripping the monster's sword, Shelley and Guido, both taken aback, question his sudden appearance. Guido, visibly surprised, asks why Derek has shown up. Derek, conflicted, ponders the potential consequences of his presence, fearing that he might only hinder their efforts and inadvertently expose his true nature. With determination surging through him, Derek clenched his fist and silenced his doubts. He realized that making excuses was futile and instead focused on taking action. Despite the doubts and mockery he faced, he resolved to do his utmost to protect others from the monster's harm. This resolve drove him forward, pushing him to embrace his role as an adventurer despite the challenges and ridicule he encountered along the way. With a surge of determination, Derek charged at the monster, disregarding the risk of revealing his true form. Despite the possibility of exposure, he knew that the lives at stake outweighed any concerns about his appearance. As he closed in on the creature, he reassured himself that his level was higher than theirs, bolstering his confidence that he could make a difference in the fight. As the clash of swords illuminated the battlefield, Derek couldn't help but notice the damage inflicted on the monster. However, despite his efforts, he couldn't shake off the feeling of overwhelming odds due to the level difference between him and the monster. In comparison to the creature, Derek, a shapeshifter, found himself at a disadvantage with his level at 21, HP at 79, and magic power at 23, all lower than that of the monster. As the monster pushed harder against Derek, he strained to hold his ground, determined not to yield. With a burst of strength, Derek managed to push the monster away. However, as he faced the creature again, he couldn't shake the feeling of the impending defeat. His gaze shifted towards Frank lying on the ground, 
realizing that despite his efforts, victory seemed out of reach. Derek wished they could retreat while there was still a chance, but it appeared that option was no longer available to them. Shelley, weakened and in pain, clutched her right arm, struggling to maintain her composure. Derek observed the monster, noting that despite being attacked by three adversaries, it bore barely any wounds, save for some damage to the head and the eye on its stomach. As Derek stared at the formidable monster, he realized its resilience. Determined to defeat it, he braced himself for the challenge. Suddenly, the monster struck, sending Derek reeling backward. Shelley watched in horror as Derek took a nasty cut from the monster's attack. Meanwhile, Guido, observing the scene, couldn't help but think that Derek had shown some capability, but perhaps this was the extent of his abilities. But suddenly, Derek's eyes began to glow, a sight that perplexed and frightened the monster. Seizing the moment, Derek grabbed his sword and declared, You let your guard down. Sorry, but I'm tougher than I look. With a swift strike, he slashed at the monster's stomach eye. However, the red magic power emanating from the monster pushed Derek back forcefully. Derek initiated his regeneration process, remarking, You let your guard down. Sorry, but I'm tougher than I look, as if I'd die from something like that. He readied his sword and declared, Now the real fight starts. The monster activated its flare vortex and Derek wondered if it was fire. Knowing he couldn't attack the monster at that moment, he prepared to defend. As the monster slashed towards Derek, he managed to block the attack. Feeling trapped against the wall, Derek realized his predicament. Shelley looked on with worry, fearing Derek might truly be in danger this time. A powerful slash occurred, but to everyone's surprise, Derek managed to grab the monster's sword with his clawed hand. Oh, you thought you'd won, he exclaimed. With a swift move, he used the monster's own sword to stab its stomach eye, eliciting a growl of pain from the monster. Shelley is perplexed as she observes the situation. The monster seems to have caught Derek, but it's Derek who's causing all the commotion. She wonders what exactly is happening. Red magic energy envelops both Derek and the monster. The monster's sword now emits red flames, partially blinding Derek. Despite this, he releases his grip on the monster's sword and leaps away just before the monster can strike him again. Derek is astonished. You're still not dead yet? Just how tough are you? He wonders aloud. From the monster's eyes, red flames burst forth, narrowly missing Derek as he attempts to dodge. He realizes the situation's severity. It's not giving me a chance to counterattack. He thinks, his mind racing. I can keep the damage from the flames down thanks to regeneration, but I'm running out of mana here. I can't take any more hits. He's acutely aware that maintaining regeneration and masquerade simultaneously is becoming increasingly difficult. Yet, he discerns that his opponent too is reaching its limits. Both the monster and Derek lock eyes, their gazes filled with determination and intensity. Derek grits his teeth, acknowledging the gravity of the situation. I have to find an opening, no matter what. He resolves within himself, preparing to seize any opportunity that presents itself. As the monster's flames began to intensify, Derek realized the danger of its expanding reach. Its range is too large, I can't get close enough. He muttered to himself, feeling the urgency of the situation. It knows about my body, I can't take it by surprise anymore. Despite his concern, Derek knew he needed to act strategically. Anyway, I should get away from the wall first. He decided, prioritizing his safety and assessing the situation for any potential openings. Yet, the relentless growth of the monster's flames only heightened Derek's unease. It seems as though it doesn't want to let me go. He observed, recognizing the gravity of the threat before him. As Shelley struggled to stand up, her thoughts raced with concern for Derek's safety. That guy, at this rate, heal. She trailed off, her worry evident. Meanwhile, Guido, determined to take action, seized his bow with a firm grip. I have to do something, he resolved, feeling the weight of the situation. Charging his bow with determination, he muttered, I won't just be rescued by some random bypass. With a focused aim, he released the arrow, 
but Derek couldn't help but wonder about the archer from earlier. The archer from earlier? Did he miss? He questioned internally. However, to his surprise, the arrow found its mark, striking a mountain and causing a heavy stone to dislodge and plummet towards the monster's head. Derek seized the opportunity as cracks began to spread across the monster's forehead. This is my only chance, he thought, his determination unwavering. With swift precision, he drove his sword into the monster's stomach eye once more. The monster let out a pained growl as it intensified its flames, its agony palpable. Derek, seizing the moment of the monster's vulnerability, resolved to take action. I should have been able to deal some damage, he thought, determined to press his advantage. Despite being unarmed, he activated his claws, knowing he had to make do with what he had. With determination in his eyes, he charged towards the flailing monster, intent on ending its life. With a heavy punch to the monster's stomach, a burst of light erupted, sending the monster crashing to the ground in agony. With a sense of disbelief, Derek pondered if he had indeed triumphed over a level 30 dungeon boss. As the screen displayed his newfound experience points and his level increasing to 21, he realized the significance of his victory. Reflecting on the nature of the dungeon as an alternate dimension fueled by malevolent mana, Derek understood that only the boss could harness the evil energy from the depths below. Now that it lay defeated, not only would the dungeon disaster be averted, but the surrounding area would likely return to its peaceful state as well. As Derek glanced at Guido with one eye, he couldn't help but wonder if his undead form had remained unnoticed. Meanwhile, Guido, though acknowledging Derek's life-saving feat, couldn't shake off his curiosity about the mysterious newcomer who single-handedly vanquished a formidable monster beyond their capability. Derek, contemplating his increased levels and newfound strength, couldn't help but see the silver lining in the midst of the dungeon disaster, considering it a stroke of unexpected fortune. With a smile, Derek contemplated his current status. Level 25, HP 47, and magic power at 2, he mused to himself. Evolution should bring monsters closer to their ideal form. Perhaps in my next evolution, I'll become even more human. He felt a sense of anticipation at the prospect of evolving further and perhaps gaining even greater abilities. Shelley intervened, expressing her gratitude. Thank you for saving our lives. My name is Shelley, she said warmly. Derek quickly concealed his stats, not wanting to reveal too much about himself just yet. Shelley asks for his name, but Derek finds himself out of mana. He realizes that he can't maintain his human form much longer because Masquerade, which allows him to temporarily take a human form, consumes 1 MP every 10 minutes. Urgently, he knows he needs to get away from them as soon as possible. He shouts at Shelley and hastily runs off mentioning that he doesn't have time to waste on something. Shelley is left feeling worried about his sudden departure, while Guido expresses confusion, wondering what could be the matter with Derek. He notes that Derek didn't even take the boss magic stone, which is the proof of ending a dungeon disaster and quite valuable. Shelley expresses her gratitude, noting that Derek's actions show humility in saving them and leaving without even revealing his name. However, Guido remains skeptical, thinking that there must be more to Derek's story. He wonders why Derek was alone in the dungeon and how he recovered from his injuries so quickly. Could it be a skill of his? Frank, now awake and covered in injuries, addresses Guido, expressing his disagreement with Guido's distrustful nature. He acknowledges that Derek came to their aid despite their suspicions, and though he acknowledges Derek's odd circumstances, he believes Derek is not a bad person. Guido, surprised by Frank's awakening, concedes, Yeah, I guess you're right. Guido, plunging his weapon into the monster's eye, focuses on retrieving the magic stone. Meanwhile, Frank observes that extracting a magic stone from a monster of this size requires considerable effort and time. Shelley, expressing concern, questions whether it's appropriate for them to claim the spoils when Derek was the one who defeated the monster. Frank emphasizes the importance of obtaining the magic stone to demonstrate that the dungeon disaster has been resolved. He suggests that they can repay Derek if they encounter him again in the future. 
Shelley, feeling uncertain, wonders if they will have the opportunity to reunite with Derek someday. Derek takes a moment to catch his breath, reflecting on the close call. He realizes that his use of masquerade was perilously close to revealing his true form to the others. Despite relying heavily on regeneration, he's relieved that he didn't simply flee this time. Derek notes that his level has increased to 25, with his MP now at 36. Derek sits on a stone, contemplating his situation. Masquerade consumes 1 MP every 10 minutes, meaning he can maintain his human form for 6 hours now. With his MP fully recovering in just half a day's rest, he ponders whether he can manage to live as a human if he hides at home. Meanwhile, his sister thinks about him while sleeping, unaware of the challenges he faces. With determination, he clenches his fist. He mentions, It'll also serve as training for my skill, so let's try heading back to human society. The next day, in the capital city of Rayburg, members of the Adventurers Guild gather, shocked to see the trio. A dungeon disaster in the Western Cave. And you said the boss was defeated already? Are you serious, Frank? Yeah, I'm serious, Frank replied. It was my first time seeing a monster at level 30. If that boss hadn't been defeated, that whole area could have turned into a monster nest. An old man named Arthur, the guild master, entered the scene. That's just too hard to believe, he remarked. Subduing such a monster all by yourselves is not possible. Frank replied, it wasn't us who defeated it, which left Arthur shocked. Shelley raised her hand and interjected, Yes, a knight appeared and defeated the boss in an instant. Arthur, now visibly agitated, retorted, Are you saying he took on a level 30 boss monster by himself? He added sarcastically, Well, it is you after all. Your pretty head has always been full of nothing but flowers, so it must be just another delusion. This remark incensed Shelley.